Welcome to session four of Developing Computational Fluency with Addition and Subtraction. This session will focus on understanding the standard algorithm and its place within the progression of skills for developing computational fluency. This is the last session because the standard algorithm should be the final step in fluency development. In our last session, we focused on strategy development. The word strategy emphasizes that computation is being approached thoughtfully with an emphasis on student sense-making. A strategy is a method of manipulating numbers to make computation easier. Strategies tend to focus on numbers as a whole and are based on relationships between numbers or on place value. For example, we can break up numbers based on their place value when adding or we can make a 10 or a friendly number. In second grade, students are asked to fluently add and subtract using strategies based on place value understanding and relationships between numbers. In third grade, students are asked to fluently add and subtract using strategies and algorithms based on place value, number relationships, and the relationship between addition and subtraction. An algorithm is a prescribed set of procedures that elicits the correct answer when executed correctly. Traditional algorithms tend to be digit-oriented with a bit of a de-emphasis on place value or the number as a whole. The algorithm in the yellow frame is what we consider to be the standard algorithm. Many mathematicians call this the current common method because it is currently considered to be the most common or the standard algorithm in our country. The current common method does vary from country to country. According to Common Core, mastery of the standard algorithm is expected by the end of fourth grade. In mathematics, an algorithm is defined by its steps and not the way those steps are recorded in writing. With this in mind, minor variations in methods of recording the standard algorithms are acceptable. Therefore, teachers may want to consider teaching the standard algorithm with new groups below as seen here in the yellow box. Here, when we record 12 for 8 plus 4, the 1 representing 10 is in the tens place. However, it is still close to the 2, so it still feels like 12. This prevents students from losing focus on the 1's place value, and also prevents computational errors when the students otherwise might forget to add the 10 floating above the rest of the problem. The standard algorithm is efficient because it employs the place value knowledge and single digit computation that students already have. Because of the structure of the standard algorithm, it may be executed with any size numbers. Throughout this video, we will reference the problem 72 minus 25. At this point, pause the video and imagine you are a teacher introducing multi-digit subtraction with regrouping. How would you approach this problem with your students? When you are ready, you may resume the video. Deborah Ball, a math education professor at the University of Michigan, often speaks of the mathematical horizon. Take a minute to pause the video and read the quote on your screen, thinking about what this quote means to you. Some possible responses are that the mathematical horizon is the ultimate goal. It answers the questions, why is it important to teach what we're teaching? Where is this concept heading? What we are currently teaching is leading to this ultimate goal or that mathematical horizon. We are building the foundation for that later goal. So as you teach, don't just focus on today's learning or how, an ans how to answer today's problem. Think about the bigger picture, the math that is on the horizon or yet to come. When we present the problem to students, we tend to teach the problem rather than the math. We help students get the answer. We're satisfied that they have the correct answer and we move on. However, we need to be teaching the math that fits within the bigger picture or leads to that horizon. With this problem, the mathematical horizon is that we can regroup to subtract any two numbers, no matter how many digits they have. In second grade, we start with two two-digit numbers using a variety of strategies so that students can learn that numbers can be decomposed to make subtraction easier. By the end of fourth grade, we learned that the standard algorithm can be used to decompose and subtract any two numbers regardless of their length. In order to solve problems like this, students must have a specific skill set. This skill set is called a knowledge package. In the book, Knowing and Teaching Mathematics, Leaping Ma asked both American and Chinese teachers how they would approach the problem 72 minus 25. Many of the American teachers mainly jumped into explaining the procedure. 
However, many of the Chinese teachers talked about a knowledge package and the precursor skills needed to teach such a problem. In the book Knowing and Teaching Mathematics, Leaping Ma asked both American and Chinese teachers how they would approach the problem 72 minus 25. Many of the American teachers mainly jumped into explaining the procedure. However, many of the Chinese teachers talked about a knowledge package and the precursor skills needed to teach such a problem. The American teachers who mentioned precursor skills noted that students should have memorized their facts through 20. Chinese teachers, however, saw working with addition and subtraction with numbers through 20 as an opportunity to introduce composing and decomposing. They stated that if cho children could decompose when subtracting from teen numbers, this could be applied to any level of problems. The Chinese teachers mentioned the three levels of problems shown on your screen. Level one is where we introduce the idea that the number 13, which is usually represented as a 10 and three ones, needs to be broken up or decomposed in order to take away seven. When we break this number up, we aren't changing its value. 13 ones is the same as a 10 and three ones. We just need to decompose it in order to easily remove the seven. At level two, the 10 that needs to be decomposed is grouped within several other 10s. First, we need to split that 10 from the others. So instead of saying 50, now we are looking at it as 40 and a 10. Then we need to change that 10 to 10 ones. Again, four 10s and 13 ones still has the same value as five 10s and three ones. It just looks different so we can easily subtract. In other words, at level two, there is a split and a change. Split a 10 from the other 10s and then change it to 10 ones. Level three would be considered third or fourth grade subtraction. This level could possibly have multiple decomp decompositions if there are zeros in more than one place. Students will have much more difficulty with this if they don't first understand levels one and two. Look at the fluency goals for K5 addition and subtraction. Here, we can clearly see the levels of learning mentioned by that ch the Chinese teachers. However, because many of the teachers are very focused on memorization and time tests, we never really build a foundation of understanding that moves us to the next level. Let's take a look at some quotes from Leaping Ma's book, Knowing and Teaching Mathematics. Here are some responses to her question, how would you present the problem 72 minus 25? The first quote, you can't subtract a bigger number from a smaller number. You must borrow from the next column because the next column has more in it. This first teacher explains that you can't subtract a bigger number from a smaller one, but we have to be careful when making statements like this. In later years, students will learn that we absolutely can subtract a larger number from a smaller one. The result will just be a negative number. The teacher also uses the term borrow. It makes it sound like the amount borrowed will eventually be returned. A more mathematically correct term would be to decompose or to regroup. Here's another statement. But if you don't have enough ones, you just go over to your friend here who has plenty. The second statement isn't mathematically sound. The teacher isn't helping students to better understand the math. Instead, he is turning the problem into a cute situation that has no connection to the mathematics at hand. Additionally, the explanation makes it seem as though the two digits in the number are two totally separate entities and not two parts of the same number. Here's a third quote. Think about this, the number 72. Can we take away 25? If you have a number in the 70s, can you take away a number in the 20s? Okay, so you understand that we can take away 25 from 72. So 2 minus 5, are we able to do that? Take away 5? Not enough. Well, what can we do? We can go over to the other part of the number and take away what we can use. We're going to pull it away from that other part over to the ones so that five becomes 15. On the previous slide, the teacher said you can't subtract a larger number from a smaller one. The subtle language difference between these two slides is huge. Here the teacher says you, like you as second graders or third graders, are not able to do that. This mathematical difference here is huge. As third graders, we have not yet learned to work with negative numbers. This quote also mentions going over to the other part of the number. 
This helps students recognize that we are still working with the entire quantity of 72. The language on the previous slide almost allows us to forget that the 7 tens and 2 ones are still part of the same quantity, 72. At the beginning of this presentation, you were asked to think about how you would introduce the problem 72 minus 25. Now that we've talked about the standard algorithm a bit and some sample student language, think about the language you would use if you were introducing subtraction with regrouping to your students. Pause the video and jot down some notes of a script that you might use. One of my favorite ways to introduce subtraction with regrouping is to use Glencoe Virtual Manipulatives. If you Google Glencoe Virtual Manipulatives, it will take you to this site. Then click on the link for manipulatives and it's a drop down box. You can click on base 10 blocks. Here you can represent any number. Right now I've represented 72. When I'm ready to take away 25, I can break apart uh, any one of those tens by clicking on that tiny little box at the bottom of um, one of those rods. Another thing I wanted to mention about Leaping Ma's book, Knowing and Teaching Mathematics, is that many of the Chinese teachers mentioned the idea that there are multiple ways to regroup a number. None of the American teachers mentioned this. Looking at our screen, the first two ways to regroup involve decomposing the minuend, or the starting number in our problem. The last approach involves decomposing the subtrahend, or the number being subtracted. At second grade, this is the goal of the subtraction standards. Students do not need to be able to use the standard algorithm until third grade with mastery in fourth grade. We have spent most of this session talking about the standard algorithm for subtraction. When talking about addition, you need to be just as cautious with your language. For example, when adding 76 plus 27, make sure to say something like this. 6 plus 7 is 13, so I will record the 10 in the 10th place and the 3 ones in the 1th place. 7 tens plus 2 tens is 9 tens. One more 10, well that's 10 tens or 100. I'll record the 1 for 100 in the 100th place and I don't have any tens, so I'm going to record a zero here. 76 plus 27 is 103. Thank you for participating in the course Developing Computational Fluency with Addition and Subtraction. As we close this final session, I want you to take a moment to think about the following things. I want you to think about some teaching strategies that you've learned as a result of the four sessions. So think about the things that you've already started to do differently, or some things that you'll try differently next year. Think about how you as a learner have changed, or some technology that you've started using. And think about any mind shifts that you've had. I hope you enjoyed this course. Have a great day.